Time to talk about some reproductive physiology. And uh, I will be your sex instructor today. That's an actual picture of me when I was 19 years old. No, actually, I was not nearly that good looking when I was 19. So, um, you should have seen this probably at some point, all the way back maybe in elementary school, I don't know. But, you know, we uh, have two chromosomes, an X chromosome and or a Y chromosome. I'm not sure the and or fits there. Wait a minute, let me back up. That's fine, we'll just go forward. So what happens here is that females have two X chromosomes and males have an X and a Y chromosome. So the X comes from mom and then the X or the Y comes from dad. So the egg always has the X chromosome. The sperm has either an X or a Y and that was, that's what determines um, your biological sex, either XX or XY. So the egg has the X chromosome, the y, sperm has either the X or the Y. Males are XY and females are XX. And there you see the spoons going after the egg, the little sperms, all right? XY, you got male. And here we see chromosomal sex determination. There's Michael Phelps. So notice it's the sperm that determines the sex of the baby, not the egg. Right, Dad determined whether you were an XY or an XX. Mom just gave you the X. Dad gave you the X or the Y. Now, these days, um, there's a lot of talk about sex and gender, and we're not really going to get into that. We're just going to point out a couple of things, um, a couple things that can be different than what you might expect. So here is Castor Semenya. <clears throat> Castor Semenya is a South African athlete, and she identifies as female. She has since she was a little girl, right? She grew up wearing dresses or other female clothing. She played with little girls. She has always seen herself as a girl or now a woman. She competes in women's track events, all right? She runs the 800 meter. Well, Castor Semenya is actually a 46 XY DSD, so they're Still, the terminology talks about these as disorders. I think that terminology, terminology may change eventually. But Castor Semenya was born as an XY. She has um, testes rather than ovaries, and she produces sperm rather than eggs. She has higher testosterone than XX individuals, all right? So testosterone produces greater muscle mass and uh, lower body fat and higher EPO. So Castor Semenya has something called um, androgen insensitivity syndrome, uh, apparently a partial called AIS syndrome. So as we'll see coming up here in a moment, your external genitalia are determined by either the presence or absence of testosterone. So if you have testosterone present, your genitals turn out male if you don't have testosterone or small quantities, then your genitals turn out female. Well, so she's an XY, so she was secreting testosterone, lots of it, but she has a androgen insensitivity syndrome in which her uh, testosterone receptors were not responding to the testosterone. Therefore, she developed female genitalia. That's why she grew up as a little girl. She's always been a little girl. But now that she's running track and field, um, it's become obvious that she's an XY. She has, again, the higher testosterone, greater muscle mass, lower body fat, higher EPO. And um, there was some controversy because some of the female athletes, she was running women's track event. She was competing against XXs. And some of the XXs said, hey, this isn't fair because she has more testosterone than we do and she's partially responding to it. So she has an unfair advantage, more muscle mass, less body fat, higher EPO. So this turned into a big mess, and it finally went to the Court of Arbitration for Sports. And they ruled that in order for her to continue competing against females, she would have to chemically lower her testosterone levels to be in the normal range for XXs. So you may have heard of this before. This was very controversial at one point. I think she's now stopped running track and... Uh, She's now playing soccer, I believe. So the point here is that there's not just XX and XY. There are various considerations that have to be taken into account. Now, some people feel very strongly one way or another about this. 
Uh, you get to feel however you want to. But I think if we're going to talk about this, at least make sure you know the basic facts. So in this case, this is what was going on. She's an XY, the X axis complained, and so the Court of Arbitration stepped in and tried to come to what they thought was a fair judgment. You decide for yourself whether that's fair or not. That's not, not for me to tell you. But you can see what was going on here. These, this is called intersex traits is a general name for these. You can see that, for example, there is a Klein filter, which is 47 XXY, so they have an extra chromosome. They have two X's and a Y. There is Turner, which there is no other one. There is only one. It's 45X. They're missing a chromosome. There you see what I was talking about, androgen insensitivity and partial androgen insensitivity. It's thought that that's what Castor Semenya probably has. But look at all the other ones. There are lots of other sort of intersex traits, they call them, in which the genetics are not exactly as simple as just XX or XY. So let's just recognize that there are a lot of possibilities out there these people didn't do anything wrong. There's nothing really wrong with them. This is just the way they were born. And hopefully we can get to the point where as a society we can just acknowledge that this is the way nature is. And let's see if we can't just try to be fair and take everybody into account. So you can see here, um, these are as of 2018. These are the best times in the 800 meter for women um, who are XX and then Castor Semenu who's an XY. Notice she had the fourth fastest time in the world, all right? And this is when the other female athletes who were competing in the 800 meters said, hey, wait a minute, we're all XXs, she's an XY. She's fourth in the world, but that's because she's got more testosterone, more muscle mass, and so on. And, you know, you can, again, talk about that, you can debate that, but one thing to take into account is that uh, among females, Castor Semenya is fourth in the world. Look at her time, 154.25. Look at now the top times for males. Notice the 25th male in the world is 142.81. If Castor Semenya were to be competing against XYs, she wouldn't even rank in the top 200 in the world. So <clears throat> this is why they had to figure out what to do and the International Court of Arbitration for Sports or whatever stepped in and they made a decision. And um, that's just something to figure out for yourself how you feel about this and think maybe about what else could have been done. This is what was done. But hopefully you can at least see why there was some controversy here. If she were having to compete against XYs, she wouldn't even be anywhere near the top. All right, so, by the way, she is an, a phenomenal athlete, and she is a, a, a wonderful human being. She didn't do anything wrong. It's just she is a AIS male, XY. So sexual differentiation, this is what I was talking about a minute ago. Until week five to six, um, pre-birth, uh, you know, after conception, uh, the internal sexual organs of the fetus are undifferentiated. We all start with those same basic junk, okay? And then again, in the presence of testosterone, our junk develops as male. In the absence of testosterone, it develops as female. So testes begin their descent in week six and complete it during the seventh month. Testes start up inside the abdomen just like ovaries do. Again, we all start with the same equipment. In males, under the influence of testosterone, the testes descend and come outside of the body. In about 3% of males, testes don't descend. That's called crypt orchidism. Um, orchid is the Greek root word meaning testis. So crypt means hidden. So crypt orchidism, your testes are hidden up inside the body. Sometimes they don't descend and then normally they just can do a, a hormonal intervention or sometimes a um, surgical intervention to get them to descend. As we'll see later, you they do need to descend. They'll cause trouble if they stay up inside the body. Um, males retain, retain a vestigial uterus called the uterus masculinus, which is a remnant of the paramesonephric ducts. Again, we start with the same basic equipment, all right? It just develops differently in the presence of testosterone. So a development of female sex organs depends on the absence of androgens and not the presence of estrogen. So once again, it is, it's androgens, testosterone, a kind of our shorthand term for all the androgens, that determines this. It's not estrogen, it's testosterone or androgens. 
And there you go, orchid is the Greek word for testis. That's where you get the word to testify. Testify means saying, yeah, um, I, got, I got the proof right here. Testify, I got the proof. You know, if you got testes, um, you've got the proof. So orchid, and that's uh, removal of the testes is called orchidectomy. So here again, development of the external genitalia, just a, a, a more elaborate illustration here that kind of shows how it all works. External sexual organs not differentiated until after week five to nine. The genital tubercle is what it all starts. We all start with that. It either becomes the glands of the penis or the glands of the clitoris, again, under the influence of testosterone. The urogenital folds become the labia minor in females, or they fuse to become part of the shaft of the penis in males. See in the bottom half of the illustration, you can see that happening. And the labioscrotal folds become the labia major in females, or they become the scrotum in males. So as you can see, it's not we're not as different as you th as most people think we are. We start with the same junk, and you can still find the same corresponding parts. Males and females, it's all the same stuff. They just de develop differently, all right? Masculinization of the genitals occurs due to the effects of androgens. By default, genitals will develop as female genitals. They say nature, by default, makes a female. Uh, we only turn into males, basically, not in terms of genetics, but in terms of development of the organs. We only become males under the influence of androgens, all right? Androgen insensitivity syndrome, the lack of androgen receptors in some males, results in external female genitals, and that's what happened to Castor Semenya. It can be either complete or partial. Hers is apparently partial because she has those high levels of androgens, the testosterone, greater muscle mass, and so on. <clears throat> and there you see just a, an illustration of the way the whole thing works. So, uh, see, we're not as different as you thought. We're all basically the same thing.